Welcome back to Wrestling with Ski. Hopefully you guys missed me. I missed all of y'all. And there's a lot of stuff to cover from, you know, the whole week's worth, really, of wrestling. There was some good stuff in there. There's some, yeah, shenanigans and idiocy in there that, you know, we're not all going to like. Um, but I got to give them credit. Like, you know, I, I definitely got to give them, you know, credit where credit is due for something that I've been complaining about. Mentioning nonstop since it looked like they were gonna go down a certain route or route, however you say it. And I think, like, I just I didn't want to see it happen. And then I had to give them credit though, because they actually they pulled the trigger and they figured out how to save all of it. And it made sense. They could do what they wanted to do with that. It elevated someone else. So. I will give them kudos for that. I'll get to it later. I have to get through a lot of idiocy first, but I give them kudos because, you know, it's not a beautiful way to get out of all of it. And who doesn't like that? Literally. And how do you not like them finding an intelligent way to solve a problem? It's just so weird that it just glitched out in the middle of it if you're watching it, so I apologize. But, yeah, let's get straight into it. You know, Monday Night Raw. You know, the flagship for forever. Not so sure that it is now, but it could be there. You know, it's a lot of wishy washy stuff and a lot of people going back and forth between them. So that one kind of has me, uh, that part has me thrown off a little. But, you know, I got to say that shush, shush thing between KO and Gable, that was deserving of a stunner, maybe even a real stunner. That would have been great. But that was deserving of a stunner. Um, having Seth and KO defeat the Alpha Academy. You know, that's something. Um, good match. Again, don't get me wrong. And I love seeing what, you know, Otis finally got gold. Like, Chad Gable finally getting used. And the guy's super talented. We've all known he's super talented. Always has been. Um, glad they're letting him do his thing now. Not, I mean, I do dig it. As much as shoosh and all that hurts my head sometimes. It was good. It's good to see them get it, and I think it's going to be a great match going forward for Mania. Like they're setting a lot of stuff up, um, but that was good. Like I enjoy seeing Gable getting pushed. Uh, this new side of Otis, you know, and the funny guy to this, you know, that's a good thing. Uh, I can't complain. Like you know, as dumb as some of it gets, I mean, they're still using them, and it's about time because they were there for forever and they weren't getting used like at all so at least not properly so that was a good thing uh, it's a shame what they're you know how they're using you know, dominic dejkovic you know still doing that t-bar nonsense and him being on raw that like there was no point in any of that um hoping they were going to switch it back over as you know they let mia yim you know she got drafted as mia yim she never got used but at least they let her do that um so that's not good hopefully you know they switch that around but i'm sure he's going to get future endeavored at some point because that's just what they do I just don't see how they can't have anything for him and how they haven't dropped the T-bar thing yet. So, I mean, we saw stuff in NXT. He could go. It's just really bad, uh, this T-bar stuff. Hopefully they drop it. Because, again, I think he's way more talented than what they're letting him show and what they're letting him do, which is a shame. But, you know, it can always get better. I mean, they they surprised me this week, so there's that. Uh, Bianca whipping Becky with their hair. I'm sure they're going to pull into some big stupid thing for Mania with that. Just because her and that hair whip, WrestleMania, it's coming. Uh, no, it's not my favorite thing, but at least it'll be a good match. It'll be better than SummerSlam. Uh, I think Bianca's going to win as of right now. I do. You never know. I can let Becky keep doing her thing. Who knows? Um, she's going to have it for next year. So you know they're going to put her and Rousey, you know, again, you know, because the whole shoulder wasn't down when the ref started the three count, the last one between, you know, the triple threat main event. So, you know, it's going to lead to that. But I still, I mean, I think it's going to Bianca at Mania. Um, just, I don't know. They could change my mind again, of course. They could always change, you know, my mind because there's still weeks to go. And as Drew keeps telling me, have faith. It's hard for me to after all the you know nonsense they've been doing, but 
I'll listen to him and I'll have faith. Uh, of course, they got rid of Champa's song and the new one sucks. But as the song says, no one will survive. And his song didn't either. The new one sucks. I uh, hope he lasts longer than the other guys whose songs they've changed because those guys are gone really quick, too. And he's way too talented. I think he could do a lot. I really do. So hopefully that doesn't lead to future endeavors like the Keith Lees and Karrion Cross and all of that. But we'll see. The Vince Pat and Austin Theory thing. It's really weird how they threw it all together, but I'll get into all of that later because they finally got to the crescendo at the end of the week. Now, Ballard and Priest was good. Like, I always like seeing Ballard work. And I know Priest has grown on people like Justin. I never liked him in NXT, but it's growing on. You know, Balor gets the title. So good for him to have the U.S. title. I think they, you know, really, I mean, the first ever universal champion gets hurt and it drops the belt. And I really don't think they've used him properly since then. So hopefully this turns into something. Hopefully they have a great one at Mania. You got the heel turn from Priest. So that happened. But again, they give the main trust me. So they'll have the time. They could put on a great match. Again, just if afforded the proper time and all of it, like because I think they could, we all know they could both go. I just want to see what they're going to do leading into Mania, and then obviously, I mean, at this amount of time left, it has to happen. Yeah, Mania, those two. So that'll be a good one. That's a good thing for Mania. Um, kudos to Bowler too for actually being able to kick out before the three count without you know, staring up at the referee like everyone does. So that was good to see too. Small little things like that, and. We ended off the night, AJ and Edge at Mania. That'll be a great match. We all know it. Edge having the same jacket on when he first confronted AJ six years ago. You know, full circle thing. Edge likes to do that. He notices these things. He picks up on these things. Which is why he's such a good storyteller. And that's great for everyone. That'll, that match is just going to steal the show. Uh, two concertos. So Edge's turn. You know. It had to happen. I kind of liked him in the middle, you know, where he could you know, be both because then he could face more people. But you never know. It could be a middle. We don't know how it's going to turn out. But AJ and Edge at Mania is going to be great. Um, long overdue. They can play into it because when Edge returned and AJ oversold, you know, the spear and hurt the shoulder. Like, they could play all kinds of different things into it. And I think that'll be one of the stealers, obviously, of the show at WrestleMania. And it really isn't, you know, a big intrigue in a lot of matches. And that one, that one, everyone wants to see. So I'm really looking forward to what they're going to do with it, just because we all want to see it. We know what they can do. AJ just got another contract. Like, this is going to be, that's going to be a doozy. And they have another couple of weeks to keep building it. So we'll see where they go with all of it. I'm very excited to finally pull the trigger, though. All of us are. I mentioned so many different people that could have been in his promo from the week before, and us to get Edge and AJ. That, that'll that be great. Then we get to move on to, you know, less great things, like NXT 2.0. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff we all saw coming, like Raquel winning, you know, the Dusty Cup match, obviously. You know, we all knew it was going to happen. Who didn't see those two moving on, but you know, good stuff there. That was good. Um, it was good to see Rude come out to the glorious entrance and hear the songs just because we haven't in such a long time. It was a good way to start off the show with Rude and Ziggler versus Breaker and Champa. I thought they put together a really good match. Champa got the pin on Ziggler, so that's going to you know continue. Again, then working with those guys down there, I mean, look, look at all the stories they could expand and all the matches we're having just for you know having guys go up and you know down. I mean, you know, roster guys going down there. Um, do I think they need to do it? As much, you know, I mean, who knows? I mean, I think it's a bad sign for the ratings when they're pulling all these guys in because that show used to hold its own without needing to have main roster guys coming up. But still a good match. Toxic Attraction, sorry, they didn't look nearly as good this week as it did the first week in their Toxic Lounge, but we can improve on that. Uh, Gunther defeated Solo Chikoa, which I thought was an okay match. Um, sort of really rolled him, in my opinion, but didn't make Solo look the greatest, but I mean, it is Gunther Solo got to have the match against him, you know, the big dog. He's one of the big guys there. So, you know, at least they have faith in him to do that and see what he can do. 
and the main event was, you know, I thought it was going really good between Carmelo Hayes and Pete Dunn. Of course, they had to give Trick get involved, which we all knew was going to happen. Whenever they do, it just ruins it for me. So hopefully they continue it on for Stand and Deliver, because I think that'll be a great one there. We'll see what they do with all of that. But that was the highlight. I mean, they started good. They ended good. You know, that's about all you can ask for, really. At least there was good stuff. It wasn't just a giant headache. So that was good. It was a song to dynamite, which, you know, started out with Tony Khan announcing that he bought Ring of Honor. Uh, for the wrestling world, I think that's a good thing, you know. Um, you know, they, they, you know, closed their doors, you know, for however long they were going to do it. I think him doing it, you know, that's a sustainable, you know, amount of money there and they can keep it going. I think it'll be really good for, you know, the wrestling world because it gives more people more places, you know, to work as they're not closing up, which people having places to work is always good. So that was a good thing. You know, that was the big thing of it for me. If people keep getting opportunities and that means Ring of Honor will probably, you know, get a better TV deal and have all kinds of stuff. People will want to work there. And again, more places for people to work is a good thing. Helping elevate that company, which I think it will. Just, you know, TV-wise, get some more talent and stuff in there. Just look at all the people AEW has, and that gives someplace else for those guys to go and work. And again, they'll get them on TV. It'll, I think it'll really invigorate it. I think it'll be, you know, good if they do it properly. But no matter what, it's still another place for people to work. It means more people can work. So that's always good for everyone. Again, just him buying it and the money, I think, will elevate the whole entire thing for everyone, which, I mean, who doesn't want more places for people to work where they can get more exposure and TV and, you know, it just helps the wrestling business as a whole. It'll never be what it was in the Monday Night Wars, but at least elevate another company, which is a good thing. Uh, which led us to Brian Danielson defeating the Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels, and what I thought was a really great match to start off the show. And the ending of it, you know, Daniel's going for the moonsault and landing in a triangle for Brian to get the win. I thought that was a great way to end it. It was, you know, one of those things you don't see a lot. And again, Christopher Daniels and, you know, Brian Danielson getting out of the match. That's good. Christopher Daniels on TV, you know, where people can actually see him. Good. I think overall a good thing. Uh, Dante Martin's brother Darius makes his, made his return. In the tag team battle royal, he looked really good. He was right down there at the end, to the end, um, which is good. Red Dragon being Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish helped the Young Bucks get the win in that, which you no know, unity. And then we all knew the idiocy was going to happen at the end, but it got him there. So that triple threat match happened. I didn't get to watch Revolution because I took really, I mean, $70 is out of the budget. Sadly, don't have it. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't. So, yeah, you know, that was a shame, but it was a good, good match. It was good to see, you know, Darius back. And that probably helps explain why Dante was all over the place and suddenly he was just gone for the last while there. Like he barely saw him. Like I think I saw him once, like after he was everywhere. So, those two having a good run being together, I think is really good for the tag team division there. And again, he's really talented. It was good to see them back together. And we'll see if they go with it. But Darius looked good for being his first time back after all that. So kudos to them. MJF and Punk segment was, you know, all right. And it went as we all expected. Uh, the women's tag match was sketchy, to put it very nicely. Like, that thing was ugly. No offense. And the House of Black vignettes with the three of them, I really do. I dig that. Uh, I was really, really, for some reason, just the three of them doing that. I think that's a good thing together. Again, it gives, you know, Murphy, formerly known as Murphy, it gives Buddy something to do and puts him in the thing where they could just have all kinds of stuff and all kinds of matches. And, and you know, that's really good for him because I thought, again, the machine underutilized him. Go back and watch his Cruiserweight title matches and defenses like he was putting on great shows, but they're mostly on pre-shows. So no one really like watched him for the most part. And like he had some really good stuff. Uh, I thought he was should have been so much better on the main roster, but it's the machine. And well, we all see how that works. So 
you know, we'll see what they do with him here. He's only been there for a little bit, but what they're doing so far, having the three of them do the vignettes and all that, I think is really, really good. Like, I enjoy their vignettes together. I like that. Just There's something about it that I like. And we got another one on Rampage, you know, which, again, was actually a fairly uh, decent night, I would say. Uh, triple threat match where Sammy Guevara successfully defended against Darby Allen and Andrade for the TNT title. I thought they put a good match together. I thought there was, you know, the usual spots. We all know how I feel about Andrade. Uh, again, I thought his match with Sammy, the solo one, just wasn't that good. So, the triple threat, though, it was good. They put in, the, you know, a good way to start out a rampage. At least it was, you know, a good match because there's normally, like, they're either normally really good rampage or really bad. So, I thought it was a good way to start it. We got another... You know, House of Black vignette with the three of them, which I like. Eric Redbeard showed up for Pac and Penta. You know, formerly known as Eric Rowan. He was in the Wyatt family, the Bludgeon Brothers, whatever. But it was good to see him show back up and get, you know, he gets to have a match. He got to have a match at, you know, Revolution. It was good, you know, it was good to see him back in a spotlight. Because, again, I thought he was really good, um, underutilized. That, that stupid fake spider thing or whatever it was that the machine had him there at the end was just dumb. Sorry, I mean, you might have liked it. The greatest thing we had was them smashing that cage like that. That should tell you something, but good to see him. Keith Lee match with whoever that guy was, which is not good in my opinion. Uh, Sheeta's back again, so we all know that's going to continue with the professor, as she calls herself now, but they put on good matches, so good for that. And Christian Cage defeated, you know, Ali Go Ethan Page. To get the final spot in the face of the Revolution ladder match, I put a lot of good experience in there. Uh, I know Christian can do in ladder matches, so I'm sure it was good. <coughs> Excuse me again, didn't get to watch it because, you know, seven, you know, 60, 70 bucks. That's just not in the cards nowadays. And that finally gets it to SmackDown. Which I didn't get to watch, you know, all of, or really any, all kinds of DVR issues. But you know, SmackDown still had its moments. I mean, we're still looking forward to a lot of stuff from SmackDown. Um, but they did, you know, good things on SmackDown for that right there on the screen for WrestleMania. They did a lot of good stuff for that. I mean, the McAfee and Theory at Mania is official. Is like the greatest thing in the world. No, is the build really weird and like all of that? Yes, but with theory coming to SmackDown to get, you know, he's on Raw to have a match with McAfee, like all that again. There's people just going all over the place anymore, but I'm excited to see what Pat can do. And he's matches NXT with Adam Cole. I mean, he was doing impressive stuff. I mean, standing on the mat, having a vertical right onto the top rope to do a superplex. I mean, he did impressive stuff and we all know what theory is capable of always anyways that you know i've been watching him and knew what he did before he got to the machine like and i thought that whole time down there with the way was like a waste uh, i don't like the selfie thing but whatever you know but i think him being in there with you know pat mcafee i mean that shows the faith that they have in Austin theory and that, and even Pat McAfee to have that match. So would we like to see more wrestling in it? Yes. Um, another match with, you know, someone who's not technically a wrestler in there, you know, not our greatest thing in the world, but it'll still be a good match. I mean, we, I mean, if you didn't see what Pat can do in the ring, watch his matches down there, you know, stuff with Adam Cole, like he did do some impressive stuff in there. So he's had a lot of time in between then. So he could be a lot you know, better. I'm just excited that, you know, they got someone in there and that shows they do have faith in theory to have the match with Pat. They have faith in them both to give them a WrestleMania spot. So I hope it's really good. We'll never know, but we'll see. But at least they got to it. And then the credit is deserved that they got the belt off of Sammy. So it's not him in Knoxville at WrestleMania for the Intercontinental title. I thought that would have just been a waste of the title. Having him lose the belt to Ricochet with Johnny, you know, helping and all that, you know. Ricochet, you know, and they called him and the artist formerly known as Alistair Black up to the main roster and just made them a tag team for those couple of weeks. And then, I mean, really, what did either of them really 
do. Um, Ricochet, I thought, has been criminally underutilized. And I mean, on the main roster, look at the stuff he did down in NXT. I mean, he did great, great stuff. And I think whoever he goes against, he has the potential to steal the show at Mania. He's going to do some, you know, it's going to be impressive. However they do it, I hope they don't have him, you know, drop it that fast, you know, at Mania. But, you know, give him a run. Let him work with people. Let him show what he can do. There's one of the most talented people on the planet. I mean, and it should come down to, you know, talent, never, you know, not just big bulky guys. Uh, and I think that's really good. And again, now Sammy can go and do the Johnny Knoxville thing. I don't think it's going to be the greatest thing in the world, but, you know, they could do that story. And, you know, end it properly, finally, and then let Sammy go back on his, you know, way. And he can still talk about, you know, him getting screwed by Knoxville, and that's why he lost and all that, and continue the conspiracy and all that other stuff he's doing. But he got another title run, and they got the belt off of him before. Mania, because that's what I was really pissed off about the whole time. I thought it was insulting to the Intercontinental title for them you know if they had to go that way at wrestlemania so it was a really good way to save it and all that you know to me uh ricochet i think will do a great thing at mania whatever match he happens to have with it and we don't have to waste it on knoxville and sammy so kudos to them i will give them credit for that and they managed to end that giant headache that i was having And give us, you know, something that a lot of people will actually be, you know, very excited about and something that people actually want to see. So good on them. I always get told you don't give them enough credit. Well, they did it good on that one. So like for a week, again, I'm sure Revolution was good. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Didn't get to watch it. Hopefully one day, you know, down the road I will. But you know, for a week, I mean, there were some ups, there were some downs. Uh, 2.0, I mean, I only had four bullet points for the whole thing. You know, it's a bunch of we saw that coming kind of stuff. Uh, but we got a lot of answers. I mean, we got, you know, Theory and McAfee at Mania. We get probably Balor and Priest. Again, it's, you know, and AJ is just phenomenal to get that, but Bianca, Becky, Charlotte, Rhonda. You know, a lot of things got answered for that. Uh, and at the show at Madison Square Garden, uh, Roman successfully defended against Seth Rollins. Again, the Ross Smackdown thing, whatever. It gave him a show at Madison Square Garden. And then Brock successfully defended against Austin Theory. And then, you know, the Usos and Roman attacking Brock afterwards. And Roman, you know, holding both belts, like so that builds extra towards that. And it gave the people at Madison Square Garden a good show. And we all know how you know WWE feels about Madison Square Garden and should feel about Madison Square Garden. So you know, it extended stories. It gave us matches, like a lot of good stuff came from it, regardless. We got to see them you know, Ring of Honor under new ownership, which would be good for you know the business as a whole, as long as you know. You know, it gives people more places to work on the AW roster because they give them a whole other thing. Hopefully, you know, they help make that even bigger and just, you know, get it on, you know, better network on a better you know, TV schedule. Just get it doing more things to work with everybody. Like, and more places to work, especially here in the States, is a good thing because there's wrestlers everywhere. So I will give them credit. Like, successfully, I thought it was a pretty – you know, decent week, you know, if you keep all the idiocy away from it, there was really good stuff that happened. So I can't, you know, I can complain about things. We can all complain about things, but overall, not a bad time. So I will give them all the credit for saving that whole entire thing that was driving me completely up the wall. So thank you for that. Thank you. Because now it gives us ricochet at Mania and match with the IC title more than likely. And that is a good thing. So, yeah, we'll see where they go forward going up to it raw tonight, you know, a whole nother week and stuff. So we'll see how everything goes um, and how they build stuff more and what, you know, stuff we find out more. And 
you know, we'll see where they go, but at least they're trying to be. I just think it's way too late in the game for them to be having to add this much stuff like when we used to have, like, main events, like we all knew what was happening, like, a year in advance. And we're still throwing some stuff together now, which is weird to me. But, uh, you know, because we complained about WrestleMania being so long, especially the one out at Levi Stadium. I mean, it just went and went and went. And one in the first one out in New Orleans, it just kept going and going and going. And they do seem to add, like, extra dumb stuff with celebrities to get them more involved to fill both nights when they could have just done the same thing and just broke it up. Even like da 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 done. That's why I don't like that. So I'll add extra dumb. Just could split it up evenly and kept doing the same thing you were doing. And that's a bad thing about you know the two night thing. I get why they did it the first time, but a lot of dumb added into it just for the sake of it. So hopefully there isn't you know too much more of that, and everything lives up to you know the WrestleMania because it's WrestleMania. Yeah, you know, it's a showcase of the Immortals and still. There's good stuff, but you know, Miz, Logan Paul, and all that. Like, I'm not excited about that. Knoxville and Sammy, like, no, I don't think any of us actually have faith that'll be a really good match. And that's, you know, a shame, but sadly, it's the way it is. Like, we can't do anything about it, can't change it, can't rearrange it. So, there it was. And we'll see where they have to go with, you know, all of that. But overall, at least I have it pointed in a better direction by the end of the week. So we'll see what they do this week. They could completely just crap it out and make it suck, but at least we got something going and we have yeah, stand and deliver coming up, which is good as well. So, you know, I thought that was the last like good show they had in NXT, you know, and then they rebranded it. So maybe they'll pick it back up, but we'll see. We'll see what they're going to do with it all. So with that being said, I'm going to jump off. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. All the new people listening, thank you. I see it. I appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and repeat on all videos, all the audio that you can. Videos are on YouTube and Rumble. I share the videos to the Facebook page when there's someone else on there besides me. When I'm by myself, it just seems weird sharing out the videos all the time. So, But those are on YouTube and Rumble. Follow along there. The audio, Anchor, Breaker, Spotify. Stitcher, Apple and Google Podcasts, like it's available on all of them. So please follow along, whatever your preferred is. And don't forget to go onto the socials, though. And you can still share them out to the socials. Follow along on the Facebook page and share that out to get it growing if you like what I'm doing. Because that immensely helps. You know, just word of mouth. It's the best kind of advertising there is. And let me know what you think. Always, you know, if you ever want to come on and talk, let me know that too. I always love to sit down and talk wrestling with people, you know. Everyone has different opinions, but it could all be really good. So, you know, with all that, I'm going to go. We'll see what they do this week. I will be back to go over all of it. So please follow along. Set your, you know, have your notifications on for whatever your preferred platform is for listening. And I'll be back. So thank you. Like, share, comment, and repeat. Share it out there. Join the Facebook page. Follow along on YouTube, Rumble, whatever. But keep it growing. Help me out. Let me know if you want to come on. And until we meet again, my friends, peace.